Hello chemistry students. Today we're going to talk about our last thing that has to do with stoichiometry and it's called um, uh, the limiting and the excess reactants. So let's go ahead and look at um, what limiting reactant means. Okay, um, Just from writing the word uh, we can see that we know this word reactant and that's always the products at the beginning of the equation. So uh, if we look at N2 gas, this is the equation we used a lot last time, H2 gas that produces the NH3. Balance that guy real quick. Okay, these are going to be our reactants. Okay, and this right here is our product. Okay, and what we're going to be learning in this video is which one of these reactants will stop the equation or the reaction um, by the amount of it that we have. Okay, so if you have um, 80 grams of this and 80 grams of that, because they're different weights, even if they have the same mass, they're going to be different amount of the molecules that are reacting or the atoms that are reacting. So we have to use a calculation to figure out which one of them is actually going to stop the equation. So if we were going to write a definition for a limiting reactant, just the word limiting, we know that it's going to be something that's going to be stopping the reaction or limiting it from continuing. So we would say our definition would be um, reactant that stops a reaction. Okay, And then um, on the other side of that we have the excess reactant. And the excess reactant is exactly what it sounds like. And whatever one is limiting it, whatever one runs out of atoms, and the other one that still has atoms will be considered our excess. So it's going to be the reactant that has mass left over. Okay? And um, you know, sometimes we might not have this excess reactant and the limiting reactant if it's a perfect, complete equation that all of these nitrogen atoms react completely with all of these hydrogen atoms. And we can actually calculate that to figure exactly how many grams we need for it to be a complete reaction. And um, we can figure out which one's going to be limiting with um, the amount that we have. So let's go ahead and um, try one of these um, problems out. Okay, So we're going to change it up a little bit with our equation. We're going to use a copper as a solid plus the sulfur gas and it makes copper 1 sulfide. Okay, So sulfur is a negative 2 so we crisscross those making that a solid. And if we balance this we'll put a 2 out here and everything else is balanced up. Okay, uh, We have a couple steps. Um, first, you're usually going to start in grams because we can't get a quantity of moles. We don't have a way to measure moles. The only way the thing that we can use in the lab is grams. So our information is typically going to be in grams and we need to um, make all quantities into moles. Okay, and this moles is how we communicate back and forth. So if we have um, 80 grams of copper and we have 25 grams of sulfur, we need to change both of these into moles, which is just a review uh, from last chapter. So you just write out your given number, 80 grams of copper, go on X and line, grams goes on bottom, grams of copper goes on bottom. And then, of course, if you one mole of copper on top, this is where we calculate the molar mass from the periodic table, or in this case, it'd just be the atomic mass. Uh, copper is 63.5 grams. Okay. And so now we just divide these two, and we get moles because grams cancels out. We're just left with moles of copper. And so we would get 1.26 moles of copper. Okay. Um, and this right here goes right along with um, your assignment for numbers 25 and 26 in your book. And so you can use this example to help you out with that. 
So now we need to take um, this 25 grams of sulfur and we need to take it to moles. So we know moles of sulfur is going to go on top, grams of sulfur goes on bottom. Um, molar mass is 32.1 grams. Divide those two and we get 0 0.779 moles of sulfur. Now, a lot of times people would look at these and say, oh, sulfur must be the limiting reactant, reactant because it's the least amount. Okay? We don't know that because we haven't used our balanced chemical equation yet. There's two coppers up here, and we haven't incorporated that two in here at all. So what we really need to do now is use our mole ratios. Okay? Use mole ratios to compare. Okay? So now you can pick either one of these. Um, either one you pick, uh, you'll end up with the same answer. Um, you just need to do one calculation though to compare, so I always just use the top one. Uh, 1.26 moles of copper, and then we use our mole ratio, and there's two moles of copper. And we get that from that balanced chemical equation, and we use the mole ratio between these two, and there is just one mole of sulfur. So now we divide this here, and this is going to give us moles of sulfur. Okay, and so we get 0 0.693 moles of sulfur. Now we use this number right here. This is this is telling us the number. If you have 1.26 moles of copper, you need 0.693 moles of sulfur for it to be perfect. Okay, so this is the amount needed for perfect reaction. Okay, this is always your perfect scenario is when you use that mole ratio. So now you compare moles of sulfur here to your moles of sulfur here. So since this is less than this, okay, we know that if it was a perfect reaction and this is the amount of moles we'd have, this would be the excess. Okay, This would be the excess which would be making this the limiting reactant. Okay, so the copper, when we put that 80 grams in to that uh, 25 grams of sulfur, when we added those, we would have leftover sulfur. We could subtract those two numbers and figure out exactly how many. And um, you could even take the moles after you subtract it, convert it back into grams, and see how many grams you have left over. Or you could even calculate the amount of atoms and calculate the exact number of atoms you had left over of that sulfur. And um, from here, we know that we would have um, zero copper left over because copper would stop the equation from happening. Okay. And um, I could even show you we could uh, go ahead and use this number instead. Now, this would be the end. This is a, a full problem right here. But just um, for showing you an example, if we put zero point, whoops, I pushed the little thing here. We use zero point. Uh, 779 moles of sulfur instead of that copper up there, it would we'd still use the mole ratio, the same one, except for it would be flipped now because we'd want to cancel out moles of sulfur. If we did this, we would get around 1.55 something, 2 times uh, 0 0.779 would give us right around there moles of copper. And you can see this number is larger than this number. For this, if we have this many, for it to be a perfect reaction, we'd need 1.55 moles of copper, which is significantly less than that. So we, this just proves again that this is the limiting reactant. So you don't have to do this step. Okay, I'm just showing you that you can choose either one of these moles to do the calculation, and you're going to get the same answer. And so this is how you would find the limiting reactant. Change them both into moles and then do the mole ratios to compare them back to the amount of moles that you have. Okay? All right, so let's do one more. Um, we're going to use the same numbers, the same calculation, same equation, or it's not same calculation, same equation. And what we're going to do here 
is we're going to be calculating the amount of grams that we're going to get. So now I could go back into my prep room. I could grab two chemicals out and I could weigh out two gram different quantities. I could see which one was going to stop the reaction and I could calculate how much product I was going to get. And this is how this all fits together this entire semester. This is how it works. Okay. So um, we have copper 2 sulfide. It's a solid. It's all balanced. We're ready to go. And what you do here is you're just going to use your mole ratio. Okay, so um, you would have to calculate the moles again. Whoops. But um, since we did it just in the last problem, which a lot of times these are stack problems, so don't calculate it all over again. Just use the information from the above problem. So we know we have uh, 1.26 moles of copper. Okay, and what we're going to do is we are just going to use that mole ratio, except from uh, last time we used copper to sulfur to calculate the limiting. Now we want to go from copper over to our um, product. Okay, so now we're going to use two moles of copper and one mole of copper to sulfide. Okay, now we are to moles of this. This wants to know the maximum number of grams of the product. Okay, in which we want grams because we can't measure out any moles. Okay, so now moles of copper is gone. So we put one mole of copper sulfide on bottom. Now we need the molar mass to get to grams. Uh, molar mass is 159.1. Take this number, divide it by 2, multiply it by 159, and our answer is um, right around 100 grams of copper 2 sulfide. Okay, And if you um, wanted to put it in scientific notation you could. I think this is equally as easy to read because you need three sig figs so it would be 1.00 times 10 to the second so I think this is just as easy to read if not easier. And so uh, now we're um, we just calculated how much product we would get of this weight uh, from these two. Okay, So this is the second way that you can use this idea of mole ratios and limiting in excess reactants. Okay? Um, and that takes you through 28 and it will be a uh, review that we'll do and other than that you are done with stoichiometry. Have a good night.